I'm going to do some discrete random variable stuff again here, this time with uh, some conditional probability as well as some, some other stuff. Uh, let's jump into a question and just see how it all, all fits together. Uh, all right, here we go. We're going to select three balls uh, from a box containing six blue balls and four yellow balls. If the ball chosen after each selection is replaced before the next selection, find the probability distribution for the number of balls drawn zero balls, one ball, two balls, and three balls. Okay, so I'm just going to draw up a table for this straight up. Uh, something like X and X uh, equals X. Actually, probability that X equals X. All right, so if X equals zero, one, two, and three. So, um, what's the probability that the three balls chosen will, um, none of them will be blue? All right, so the prob there's 10 balls in the box altogether. Let's just write probability of one, pulling one blue ball out, would be uh, six over 10, because there's 10 balls in total. So that makes three over five. So there's a three in five chance that if I reach in and grab a ball, it'll be blue. So what's the probability that none of them are blue? So the probability, zero blue. Well, that means that the first ball pulled out would be yellow, and the probability of a yellow ball is two in five, um, because there's four out of 10, which is two in five. The next ball is also two in five. Remember, we keep replacing them every single time. And then the next ball is two in five. So that's like eight in 125. So there's my answer here, eight in 125. Uh, now the, the, actually I'll do the three one next because that one's gonna be easier than the other two. The probability of three blues that's going to be equal to the first one being blue, which is three and five, the next one being blue, which is three and five, and the next one being blue, which is three and five, which is uh, 27 in 125. All right, and the one and the two, that's more complicated. Um, might, I might draw a tree diagram for that just so you can see it. Right, so there's the completed tree diagram there. Uh, so you can see the probability that blue, blue, blue is three-fifths times three-fifths, three-fifths. Probably of red, red, red is two-fifths, two-fifths, two-fifths. We've already done those two. Um, the next one is what's the probability of pulling out one blue ball? Okay, so let's look at the options we've got. Um, if I was to end up on this um, branch, blue, red, red. Uh, if I was to end up on this branch, that's red, blue, red. And if I was to end up on this branch, that's red, red, blue. So there's three options in play here. Uh, now I can find the probability of each fairly easily. Uh, so the probability of blue, red, red will be equal to three fifths, two fifths, two fifths, three fifths times two fifths times two fifths is uh, four times three is 12, 12 in 125. Now I can do the other two as well, but when I do it, you'll notice something. Probability of red, blue, red, red, blue, red is equal to two fifths, three fifths, two fifths. Now, because we're dealing with replacement here, because we're putting the ball back, um, the probabilities, you can see two-fifths, two-fifths, three-fifths, three-fifths, two-fifths, two-fifths, it's going to be the same. And in fact, the probability of my third branch, that one there, is also going to be the same. Uh, red, blue, blue. That's going to be, um, oh, sorry, 12 in tw 125. That's going to be 12 in 125 as well. So that's all the options. All right, I misspoke there. Red, red, blue is what it was. Um, now that's all the options with one blue ball. Uh, so the probability of one blue is equal to 12 on 25 plus 12 on 25 plus 12 on 25 on 125. 
which is 36 in 125. Okay, we're pretty close. We just need to find out that probability for two blue balls. Uh, now, you, you hopefully realize I only have to do one of these branches and then just multiply it by three. So the probability of blue, blue, red, just do that one over there. Probability of blue, blue, red is equal to three fifths, three fifths, two fifths. Oops, times, times. That's 18 over 125. Uh, and then the probability of two blues will be equal to three times that because there's three branches where that occurs. So that's um, it's 54 over 125. 54 over 125. Okay, um, just to check that all of this has worked, and you definitely should do this, uh, if I add up those numbers, 8, 36, 54, and 127, you get 125. 125 over 125 is 1. It is a probability distribution because all the probabilities add up to 1. Okay, we've done heaps of work so far, but we've only just started. We haven't gotten to the bit where we talk about conditional probability. And this video was including conditional probability. So to do this next question, we're going to use the rule for conditional probability. Now, it looks like a bunch of, of crazy letters and symbols, but once we get stuck into it, it'll become much more easy to, to understand here. All right, we've got to find the probability that two balls are chosen given that at least one ball was blue. Okay, so the probability that two balls are chosen so the probability that x is equal to two the variable is equal to two and then this straight up and down line now that straight up and down line is given the probability that x is equal to two given that the variable or given that the variable is greater than okay and it says given that at least one ball was blue so given that the variable is greater than zero um, because at least one means that you've gotten one seat the blue balls is more than zero so that's our formula so far now that's going to be equal to the probability that the variable is equal to two the thing we want to find uh, this one which is intersection which just means like and um, x is greater than the thing that we want to find which is uh, sorry the the given that we have which is zero over the probability that the variable is greater than zero all right i know that looks still looks a bit confusing but now we'll jump into it this first bit, the top bit that says the probability that x is equal to 2, which is 54 over 125, uh, and x is greater than 0. All right, well, the probability that x is greater than 0 is 1, um, but the probability that x is equal to 2 is 54 in 125. So the probability that it is both of those things is just simply the probability that it's 2. That won't always be the case. Uh, but it is the case in this particular question. So the probability that x is equal to 2 is 54 and 125. Uh, and we need to divide all of that by the probability that x is greater than 0. The probability that x is greater than 0 is equal to this number plus this number plus this number, or the faster way to do it, the probability that x is greater than 0 is equal to 1 minus the probability that x is 0. In this case, 1 minus 8 over 125, um, which is 118 over 125, divided by 118 over 125. Okay, um, we're pretty close to the end here. 
So we can say that that's the same as 54 over 125 times 125 over uh, 118. 54 cancel cancel over 118. And we can simplify that um, to be 27 over 59. All right. Um, then we have a whole bunch of stuff. We've created a distribution and then we've used conditional probability um, to find out the probability of something given something else. Pretty tricky.